Hello, uh, today's video is just going to be outlining the introduction for beliefs in society for the AQA module. So this is really just outlining everything in terms of initial definitions and keywords that we looked at in lesson. So in today's videos we aim to discuss and define different religion and belief systems um, and then to understand the different definitions for religion as well. Um, as we know that there are several definitions which we'll be looking at and looking at several types of religions as well. Now, just a simple definition of religion. So religion is a belief in worship of the supernatural. So a real big emphasis on that. And a more specific definition given by Robertson here is religion is a belief in worship of supernatural beings which have a governing effect on human behaviour. So within the second part of the definition there, the governing effect on human behaviour. So clearly giving defi uh, def defined guidelines as to how individuals should be acting in terms of um, religious beliefs and how what they should be doing in society. Now, a belief system is any integrated set of ideas which influences the way that people see the world. Belief systems can take several forms, but the most important types are religious, political and scientific. Now, this is important that we realise that there are these three major belief systems that influence an individual's lives, because often we just get focused down on one or the other. Now, religion can be difficult to define, but any definition is usually based on a belief in the existence of supernatural entities or other forces. And religions may or may not claim the existence of a supreme god or several gods. Now, for us really here, this is a good point for us to really recognise and take note of. Because when it comes around to identifying the different types of religion, we're going to look at now the definitions of them. And really try to get some contextualised information about these different religious sects and systems. Now... First and foremost, the first one that we're looking at here is monotheistic. Now, this is a belief in a single God. Now, a single God is then governing and giving out the instructions on how individuals should be living their lives. So, obviously, an example, as we can see, is with Christianity. Now, polytheistic is belief in several gods. So, the example of here we've got is Hinduism and other ancient religions, such as Greek and Roman, um, where obviously they had several gods which governed and then dictated how individuals should be behaving. We've got spiritual religion without a belief in God. Um, the example here is it's more of a system which dictates and encourages humans to behave in specific ways, to be kind to one another and to nature around them. Now, example of this is Buddhism, where no god that exists, um, but rather a set of values to adhere to, which obviously Buddha gives individuals that system. Then we've got cult with supernatural beliefs, but no concept of God. An um, example of this would be Heaven's Gate cult, which we'll be discussing later on in another video. We've got animism here, which is a belief in non-human beings slash gods, which obviously really encourages that connection between nature and humans as well. Now, one we've got here is indigenous nature worship by the Shinto religions. Then we've got totemism, which is human natural being connection, and it's Obajawa natural American beliefs. All of which I have got resources on, which have been given to you guys in lesson. However, in terms of belief system, particularly when it looks at religious belief systems, we are missing one massive one, which is atheism. Now, atheism can still be considered a part of the type of religious beliefs um, to an extent because it is a belief system which then informs individuals how they should be acting and behaving. Um, obviously, they ignore the fact that God does exist or they disbelieve that there is a supernatural being. However, as much as they might argue, it still falls within this religious belief system as terms of the definitions. Now, religious beliefs of some sort are present in every known human society, but the nature of those beliefs varies considerably. Now, any definition of those beliefs must encompass this variety. So really, early studies of religion saw it as a response to human needs both emotional and intellectual. 
The fact that from the earliest periods of man's existence, religion has played a major role in human life illustrates its universal importance. Religion are, uh, provides us with questions and answers to the reasons for the life's big questions, such as, as birth, death and marriage, explains why that all happens in terms of our society and provides us a guide to behaviour to be one of those saved, one of those elect from that community. Now, sociologists tend to adopt either a functional or substantive approach to defining religion. And we're going to look at those in a bit more detail now. Now, the substantive definition here. Um, these are concerned with the content of religion. So, for example, Jung in 1981 defined religion as a system of beliefs and practices by the means of which a group of people struggles with the ultimate problems of life. Therefore, this is helping individuals gain the understanding of what is going on in their life and how they could possibly deal with it as a result. Um, really then providing them with that support and nurturing feeling as a result. So, for example, when there is a drought or famine, obviously the substitute definitions gives the individuals a bit more of a reason and a explanation as to why that is happening to them. Now, a functional definition here, these, these define religion in terms of its functions it performs for society and for individuals. So, for example, Durkheim in 1961 defined religion in terms of the distinction between two domains in the world one of which is sacred and the other profane. Things in the sacred domain produce a sense of awe and respect, whereas the profane does not. Durkheim even thought that nationalism was a type of religion he called a civil religion, because it has similar functions to more conventional religions. Now, obviously we've got an example of here in terms of those two domains which Durkheim initially really focuses down on. We've got the Shroud of Turin here, as you can see in the picture. Now, the Shroud of Turin is seemingly the cloth in which Jesus Christ's body was wrapped in, and there were left blood stains in it. And when they analysed it, they could they could cl see, clearly see defined um, an outline of body with um, marks and potential damage done to it, which could which is similar to the injuries in which Jesus sustained from the Bible stories. So obviously for this, it attracts individuals. It is a piece of history which is revered and really respected highly. So as we could probably point out here, this is in fact a sacred object, purely because individuals do respect it and it's not treated as an everyday object as a result. Now, here is just a little bit of extra information about the Shroud of Turin for you. So the Shroud of Turin is a 4.4 metre long piece of cloth that many Christians believe that was used to, to shroud Jesus' face and body. Um, and this will go back in display on Sunday in the Italian city's cathedral. And the cloth which appears to show the imprint of a man's face and the body markings that would match those of a person who was crucified. And as you can see in the picture, it's not very clear, but you can see the outline of a body. Yep, so I'll see that is the face there, and then you can see the body emerging like that, if that's any help for you. So, obviously they believe that this was the cloth in which was used when wrapped on Jesus' body when he was crucified. So for us, it is a sacred object. People would not be treating this as an object which they could just touch and do anything to, it would be very, very special for anyone who even came to see it because they would believe that it would increase their connection with God as a result. Now, the main, main thing here that we've got to identify is here are some examples of um, functional religions. Now, the cult of celebrities is another possibility. Every year, Elvis fans go on a pilgrimage to his home, Graceland's, and there have been many stories that he's still alive and people, people um, fans have claimed to have felt his presence and even claimed he's cured them of disease. 
Many teenagers' bedrooms become shrines to pop stars or footballers like David Beckham. Um, some would argue that consumerism is the new religion in the West. We want heaven on earth and now it is it is to be given achieved by buying goods and services which are given which give us our identity and dictate how we feel and view society and how we should behave in society as well because if uh, if we look at for example here a very popularized at the minute the Kylie Jenner challenge so obviously the Kylie Jenner challenge it gave girls a set a set of ideas and guidelines on what they need to do to really be like her. So in itself here, the consumeristic ideals, um, individuals are buying into this and then obviously acting it out. And obviously they would do this in terms of other people as well. So obviously Michael Jackson um, visiting his um, properties um, and all that, people might claim to feel his presence because he's such a big um, character and idol within their lives. Now, all the definitions emphasise certain aspects of religion and ig or ignore others. So, functional definitions tend to be too inclusive, and it's too easy to qualify as religion, while substantive ones tend to be too exclusive, and it's difficult to qualify as religion. Now, this issue becomes more important when we consider whether religion has declined. So, when we talk about secularisation, which is the separation of church and state, so the fact that the church will no longer have any true influence on what the state does so separating the two from one another which is actually as we can see has happened within societies such as France. Now if we judge the subsequent definitions we are looking at decline in belief in God however that if we may define in functional terms it may be that religion is becoming replaced by other things that perform similar functions such as celebrities. Now, here are the criticisms of the two definitions. So, functional definitions tend to include many things some would not regard as religious, e.g. nationalism, which is the idea of the civil religion which Durkheim outlines. And perhaps science has replaced a religion in answering some of the fundamental questions. So, it's now because we've taken on that positivist view that we are now understanding and really appreciating that life can be based off of the scientific objective beliefs rather than these religious supernatural powers. Now our substance definitions are too narrow and many are based on western monotheistic religions. Now have a quick little think what does monotheistic mean again? Remember, monotheistic is literally the belief in a single God. And we can see this with examples of religions such as Christianity, Islam and Judaism. Now, obviously, within the Western world, we've now seen the idea of nationalism really starting to take over in some portions of the society. Now, Durkheim even thought that nationalism was a type of religion. He called it a civil religion because it has similar functions to more conventional religions. Now, the idea of a civil religion has been particularly criticised for stretching the definition of the functional definition to include beliefs that have no supernatural elements to them. While there, have been, there might be similarities between nationalism and religion, beliefs such as nationalism do not provide ultimate meanings about the purpose of life, um, nor do they explain the origins of the universe, as many religions claim to. Now, nationalism is providing that consensus, those values in which people can use to live and operate by within their societies. The example that we looked at here was the, with the Reggie Yates documentary um, and the ideas that are promoted within Russian communities. Because we can see that the idea of nationalism there, it's not used as a substitute for religion, but it's used as a way of really binding the whole of this community together underneath this one Russian ideal of how, so the, how big and how wonderful their country is. Now, these nationalistic views are, can sometimes be problematic, but they do give the individuals a set of beliefs which then gives them some stability in their lives. Now, well then, if we look at the, the Russian views, 
the belief and the understanding of Putin does not take over the role of a supernatural being. Instead, he just gives the Russian people the idea of that he's strong enough to ensure that he will protect the country's values against the rest of the world. He never claims to be a supernatural figure like Jesus or God. He just gives the idea that he is a strong authoritarian figure. And the best bit that we've seen within this documentary is when he shows his strength over nature. So when he's picturised or taken pictures with animals and they say that he commands that natural respect of the animals as a result. Now, we can see that, yes, to an extent, those nationalistic figures within Russia are forming a civil religion. Now, nationalism, this is a very important. Um, if you take a functional approach, then the functions could be replaced by other institutions. Now, Bella, amongst others, argue that Americanism has become a sort of secular religion in the USA. People like George Washington, Lincoln, etc. have become saints in people's ideas um, because they have been able to unite the nation as a whole um, under that one flag and underneath that one national anthem. All of these figures and all of these items are treated as sacred as a result. Um, similar claims are obviously made about Russia, as we've just discussed, and other communist countries where Lenin, Marx, etc. were almost worshipped about their writings and they became biblical in a sense. Now, religious belief systems remain dominant in some parts of the world, although in Western societies, alternative belief systems have become more influential since the 18th century. And these include the political belief system and the scientific belief system. Now, the political belief systems are based on views about how society should be organised and do not have a supernatural element to them. Nevertheless, political beliefs can be strongly held that, that they lead to violence, wars and the persecution of social groups. Examples of political belief systems include the belief in the free market, capitalism, sometimes called neoliberalism, now Marxism, socialism, liberalism, and so on. Now, communism was influential in the Soviet Union from 1917 to 1990. Communists believe that the means of production, e.g. land and factories, should be run by the state rather than owned by individuals to create greater equality. Then the next belief system that we encounter is fascism, which was influential in Nazi Germany from 1933 to 1945. Proponents believe that the interests of the state should be paramount and that this required the leadership of the authoritarian dictator who pursued the interests of the nation. Now, we're going to give a bit of a definition of neoliberalism here. Now, neoliberalism here is belief in free markets, and this is influential in contemporary USA. Neoliberals believe that the private enterprise is the best way to run society, and that competition drives efficiency and ensures consumers' needs are met. Now, that is the outline of the political belief system. The next one that we're going to look at is the scientific belief system. Now, the scientific belief system um, have their basis in the belief that it is possible to understand the natural world and produce truthful knowledge about it. They can, use, they can be used to justify certain types of behaviour and to criticise others, e.g. behaviour relating to health. Now, this is because we've started to adapt and really take on this idealist, uh, this positivist um, perspective. So it really creates this objectivity in terms of our values. Now, Birdstedt in 1963 defines objectivity as meaning that the conclusions arrived as a result of inquiry or investigation are independent of the race, colour, creed, occupation, nationality, religion, moral preference and political predisposition of the investigator. In contrast, value-laden beliefs are influenced by the moral preferences of an individual and are least partially subjective based on personal opinion and not unbiased truth. Generally, the followers of religious, political and scientific belief systems do not believe them to be value-laden, but see, see, see them as objective. However, others may well see them as biased ideolo ideologies. Now, an ideology is simply a bit defines a belief system that supports the interests of a particular social group at the expense of others. 
Now, the ideologies can be used to maintain the power of a dominant group in society and religious, political and scientific belief systems have been seen as ideological. Um, so all of these are fundamentally leading and uniting individuals under one common theme, be it underneath one religious values, political values or scientific ideology. All of this is absolutely crucial for us to recognise. And as we can see scattered throughout all of this information, we can tend to argue that we can see the emergence of the approaches which we are going to be looking at further in subsequent videos.